Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today I want to go over three lighting tips that you can use to take your cinematography to the next level. I think a lot of us are taught when we're coming up in lighting and the film world that underlighting is like a horror thing because when you underlight somebody, we're not used to seeing light coming from that direction. It's creepy. And then I went into it more and learned that beauty lighting uses a lot of underlight to fill in the shadows, to make the face look more appealing. And so that got me thinking, can you find the line where you can make an image still moody, but also use bounce light? Something that maybe everybody else does uh, I honestly think it's used a lot more than I realize. In looking at these BTS pictures, you can see that some of them, if not all of the bounces that he uses for the cove light, extend all the way down to the floor, and they actually go onto the floor a little bit and wrap around. That's not something you do by accident because when I'm on set and I have white material, I am conscious about getting it dirty or letting it touch the ground. And so that leads me to believe that this is something he's doing on purpose and all the ambient light or any spill that's coming off of his fixtures are going to hit that and bounce back up and illuminate the subject. I think that that goes a long way to illuminating just a bit under the eyes. It's so subtle and natural that it's something that we don't realize, but it's definitely something that now that I know about it, I'm going to be looking for on my own personal shoots. But I do think that if you use this setup the right way, you are going to be able to get a natural looking image. And it's definitely something I'm gonna be adding to my lighting toolkit. So yeah, let's get on to the next lighting setup. And so for the next cinematography tip, we're going over using the sun and mirrors to light your scene. So I had originally wanted to do this outside, but due to circumstances I couldn't control, I'm here indoors. But I think this setup actually shows how I use the mirrors. The thing I really like about these mirrors is that they're very versatile, very lightweight, hard source. Now you can get the same kind of harsh light with flags or even a spotlight mount, but that's gonna take up a lot of space. And so this is where a setup like this really shines. Another use case I like to use this for is when we're on a project and there's no budget for set design. Sometimes we're stuck shooting against a bare wall, plain white. And so I'll set up a mirror, bounce light into it, and just to get some texture onto that wall. So if you wanted to soften it up, you can add a diffusion paper to the front of it and it's gonna act like a soft source. So it's really versatile in that way. Just keep in mind that when you're attaching any type of filters to this, it is gonna lower the intensity. Some of the cons that you're gonna face with this is that it is a mirror, so you do have to be conscious of transporting it and not breaking it. Another con is the fact that it does get smudgy, so you do have to keep a rag and clean it off. So for my third cinematography tip, I wanna go over something called skip lighting. I recently learned about this technique from watching the Last of Us series on HBO. The cinematographer used skip lighting to create a natural looking image. It went with the story because there really wasn't electricity in a post-apocalyptic world. But in real life, people usually aren't standing always in the perfect amount of light. Basically, skip lighting is where you're not trying to go for the most perfect lighting. Uh, it just resembles more natural how things would happen in the real world. So as you can see with the setup I have here, I kind of go with that same thought process and I'm using all natural light and I just position myself, in this case, the subject would be myself in a strategic place to where the natural light falling in this room could illuminate 
and give me a, an exposure I wanted to work with. I'm definitely gonna be adding this to my toolkit. Even if I'm not doing skip lighting techniques, I, it's something that I think is good to think about just to have, be in that state of mind, thinking what is around your subject, what's bouncing colors and uh, what's going to affect your skin tones and things like that. Just like being outdoors, the green grass usually gives a cast to your skin. So with that in mind, it definitely adds to the type of story where this type of lighting technique would be uh, useful. But all in all, I think this is a great lighting setup. It's something that I'm going to be using in the future, depending on the story. But further than that, it's a mindset that I'm going to be using um, during my shoots from now on. So that's it for this video. If you stayed through and watched all three tips, I hope you learned something. If you have anything else to add, you can leave it down in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed, you should go ahead and do that because next video, I'm going over a music video that I recently was able to direct and be cinematographer on. So you're not going to want to miss that. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. I'm so appreciative of all the feedback I've been getting on the other videos. So that just gives me motivation to continue to bring content. So thank you and until next time.